Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, we can start the talk. Actually, the meeting got full. Meeting is full again, so we can start the talk and we will record the session. So I've started the recording. Uh, Madhu, madam. Yes. Uh, Dr. Kapil here. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. Uh, I think here as well, I have a limitation of 100 people. Um, no problem. What we will do is we'll send a message to all other students that the recording will be available to them. Okay. Okay, sir. No problem. Completed. Okay, so, uh, Rushad. Yes. 
Yeah, uh, can you give uh, some introduction about Madhu Madam and then she can make a start with the presentation. You are so good. Good afternoon, everyone. We are really happy to see you all in huge numbers. We have with us today Ms. Madhu, Mrs. Vadmi Vadka, Senior Librarian and Head at Professor M.M. M. Sharma Library. Ma'am has been successfully managing and organizing the library with her vibrant leadership. A person who is fondly known for her kind approach to students, she has left no stone unturned in catering the resources for academic research and scientific understanding of students. Professor M.M. M. Sharma Library has access to more than 500 electronic journals, databases such as Reactus, SkyFinder, Scopus, Web of Science, etc. The library is fully computerized using the library management software called Lipsys. It can be termed as a hybrid library with best collection of printed and digital documents. With immense gratitude, I now humbly invite ma'am for her presentation. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Rushad. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. I'll just quickly share my screen and then we'll start. Madhu, madam, you can start. We can see the. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon to all, and I welcome you for this session. And uh, firstly, so I'd like to thank Bombay Technologies for actually initiating uh, this session because uh, to, uh, it is really important for you all to know uh, what are electronic resources, how does this, uh, how are they going to be helpful to you, especially in this time when during the pandemic, when uh, you all are physically not present in the campus and from your homes. Uh, when the physical library is shut for you all, how do you actually go ahead and access the resources that the library subscribes to? Uh, so, firstly, I would say that why you, now that everybody is using gadgets and familiar with internet, with your technologies, one would feel that uh, why do you, I, why do I still need to use libraries? You know, that is the question with which I would like to begin with. So uh, it is like people would think, students especially think that now everything is av available on Google. So whatever doubt I have, whatever problems I have, I just Google it out and I get answers to it. Do I really need to come to the library to uh, access the resources? So this is, this is the common question asked these days by the newer generation. So I would like to this important to use the electronic uses uh, like resources the library resources and um, uh, why because of the for the authenticity the topmost reason why you require to use the library resources you need to go to google and you search for any kind of information that you require first you come across wikipedia uh, Wikipedia would be the first, you know, the, if among the result, Wikipedia will come as the topmost result. So you all know that how Wikipedia operates. It is like anybody, a layperson like me, also can start Wikipedia or share something on Wikipedia. Now, uh, if I share something in my uh, subject domain, like library and information science, that of course there is an authenticity because I'm a practicing librarian. I have been, uh, uh, you know, doing research in my field for a long time. And so maybe I am the uh, right person to write a Wikipedia thing. But it's not be the case in some other subjects. So supposedly I have to write on chemical technology. Do I have the authority 
to write on chemical technology question mark so wikipedia is something where any lay person can uh, give their views their opinions and sometimes it can take you to at all there are chances that it might be completely the information might be completely wrong as to what the real information is like uh, now with this uh, pandemic when everybody is sitting at home and you can see that in everybody is trying to uh, communicate with each other through their mobile phones especially whatsapp and such type of uh, uh, social networking tools uh, you will see that there is so much of fake information passing on so it's like uh, during the pandemic when everything was shut down during the lockdown period uh, some people shared that there were uh, peacocks uh, in this region you know on the mumbai uh, roads then when you then the same message will come saying that uh, at delhi or delhi uh, you find peacocks and this image they were shared uh, am i audible yes 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 so um and the images that are shared are exactly the same so whom do you believe do you believe i mean it is really very difficult to find out that what is the correct right and uh, authentic information and how do you find it from what source this information is coming so if you see ki somebody has sent it on whatsapp definitely will not believe but something which is telecast on television uh, in the news maybe uh they show that okay peacocks were actually seen on the roads of mumbai at nariman point or whatever area then probably you will believe and you will say okay this might be authentic information because it is coming from the news media you know so the so the source you know the source from where it is coming and that is how you decide whether the information is authentic or not so i would say when you google out things you get information you know the sources from where this information is coming so it is a, a it is really questionable to record or not so in these cases a like authentic source that you need to refer to and of course in research or in academic this is not acceptable when you uh, just pick up information from anywhere and everywhere and try to put it in your research reports or try to put it, uh, put it in your academic uh, assignments or project works so uh, you one has to be really careful Uh, and suppose if you start with the wrong information your whole project your whole assignment your whole research might go in a different direction altogether so one has to be very very careful as to from where they are picking up the information and that is when the library is coming picture because the libraries will collect resources which are authentic you know they uh, the librarian or the library professionals or the staff who works in for the library will first uh, uh, try to find out uh, before purchase of any kind of electronic resources any kind of physical printed resources will first check for the authenticity of their which is the publisher whether the whether the book comes are authentic enough you know they come from authentic source and after that only that particular resource is procured in the library so one thing you are very sure that when you go to the library or when you use the electronic resources of the library you are actually accessing the authentic information you know so this is very very important for you all to know that why libraries are important even in the google age uh, so now i i sciences chemical technology pharmacy and all the allied subjects whatever uh, whichever departments we have we have a very good collection on each of the uh, it follows universal basic classifications with fully automated using its software 
and uh, collection includes print plus digital resources and uh, we subscribe to a number of databases and libraries under cctv so this is just to give a give you a brief beyond that uh, so as i said earlier that uh, you really have to uh, know that when i mean uh, i just explained to you that how important it is to use the library resources and to come to the library but here i meant not physically coming to the library only and that's why i've titled it beyond the four walls of the library you know beyond the walls of the library because now library is not uh, which is in the four walls of the library but it is a lot num lot more number of electronic resources which uh, the library subscribes to and also some open source uh, open access resources which are freely available to everybody uh, access it, any person can access it this open access resources so my uh, uh, in my session i will be uh, starting with what exactly is the um, uh, what exactly is a scholarly communication cycle? And again, I also like to uh, briefly explain you that what are primary, secondary, and tertiary resources. You know, all the information resources. I mean, any source from where we get information is called as information resource. So it can be audio, it can be printed, of course, it begins with printed, then there is audio that can be visuals, and uh, there could be some softwares which are, uh, uh, which are available to analyze your data. So all these are nothing but information resources, uh, and they can be classified into mainly three types, the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary. So the primary resources are the ones where uh, the researcher actually conducts her research and writes down or uh, documents it in some form, documented in some form, and it is published. So, so it can be books which are written by single authors, non edited books. Uh, which also, there are two types one is the monograph which are written by a single author, and the other which are edited books where the editor uh, So, books are one, then Journal articles. The term And there is some network issues mm -hmm. on your side. Your voice is cracking. Okay. I'll shift to. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, ah, so the primary, secondary, and tertiary resources. So, the primary are the ones where the uh, researcher actually uh, writes down uh, his or her research work, or it could be an expert writing on a particular subject. So, a single authored book, a monograph, is a primary resource also a journal article so journal is nothing but uh, uh, but a kind of a document which is brought out periodically so something like a newspaper or a magazine which comes out uh, periodically maybe monthly maybe weekly yearly half yearly and whatever the frequency but here the only difference between a magazine and a journal is that journal will document only research work 
okay so it will have only research work as their articles and nothing else so that is called as a scholarly journal uh, so these come into the primary sources of information where you actually get the information on a particular topic then comes the secondary source of information so these are mostly compiled works where um, uh, information is gathered from the primary resources so it could be the best example is your encyclopedias or dictionaries which are the secondary sources where the information is compiled from different books from different journal articles into an encyclopedia where you get information on a particular topic so but it is a compiled work it is not written by a single person you know so it is a compilation of primary resources so that becomes your secondary sources and the third are the tertiary sources uh which will actually point you out to the primary resources so in any kind of book if you see if you want to go to a particular you want to know whether this topic is covered in the book what will you do you generally go to the content page you find out oh, where it is if not then you go at the back of the book there is an index page where the terms are indexed and against that the page number is written so if you just uh one second so if you uh if you just uh, uh check the page number against the uh, the keyword that you are looking for and you go to that particular page you will immediately find the information on that particular keyword for which you were searching so similarly these tertiary sources are the ones which are uh, a kind of a database of the primary resources which will point you out to the primary resource so supposedly you are searching on a particular topic uh there are databases where uh, like google when you search for google it will point it uh, point you out to the other the results you know and which can include various things but here these sources will actually point you out to the uh, primary resources the book chapters or the journal so these are uh citation databases we can call i mean that is what they are called now uh, earlier it were mostly indexing abstracting resources uh but now they have lot of value addition in it and there are various modules added to it and they are called citation databases and examples of that are like scopus or web of science uh so this is what i wanted you all to know before we start so now i start with my uh, session and show you exactly how uh, is the scholarly communication cycle moves and how these electronic resources are important and when you need to use which resource So this is a typical scholarly communication cycle. So as you as you have uh, life cycles for various products and environmental cycles, similarly for information also there is a scholarly communication cycle. That how information is passed on from one source to the other, uh, from one person to many, and how it is going on expanding. How the knowledge is going on expanding. so how the ecosystem of this scholarly communication is going on expanding so you begin with new knowledge is created so a researcher will do his or her research and will try to communicate it to others through books or through journal articles now the new researcher will uh, so this particular uh, uh, manuscript that this researcher has written will be given to publisher and the publisher will then decide to publish it in a journal or a book depending on what kind of uh, article or what kind of coverage the researcher has written on basis of that it will be decided uh, whether it will be published in a book form or in a research article form in a journal after it is published libraries will actually go and collect this i mean subscribe to these journals or procure these books in the library and add it in their collection so libraries are kind of a facilitators uh for uh, you know for disseminating uh, this information uh, this primary information to its users to other researchers researcher to other researcher researcher so after libraries uh, provide then libraries will provide which is generally for electronic resources it's 24 by 7 access you can google it out also and then uh, the new researchers the students uh will actually read this and then they will start their own research then they will contribute uh from their side into new knowledge because they will do their own research and then the cycle goes on and on and that is how it is even getting expanded because new and new knowledge is getting added to this information cycle to this uh, uh, umbrella of uh, scholarly 
uh, material, you know, this solid, scholarly knowledge database, I can say. So this is going on increasing day by day because new researchers are picking up information from the old researchers and giving, contributing the new research. And in that, there are publishers and libraries who are the facilitators of uh, adding to this knowledge database, you know, to expanding this uh, information database and making it available to everybody, to all the researchers and especially academic students like you all. Uh, a typical research process. I want you all to know the research process because any time, be it a small project work that has been assigned to you, a small assignment that is given to you uh, by your faculty member, uh, it is not that you just Google it out, you pick up information from here and there, you compile it and you submit it. No, it shouldn't be that. Because I said that the information that you collect should be authentic information in the first place. So you use, make use of libraries. And you have to know that how the research process uh, actually is, how it is to be conducted. And for even for a smaller assignment, I would say that you should uh, follow, uh, try to follow the uh, standard research process because that is going to actually uh, take you in the right direction in your research. Uh, you will be able to furnish authentic information in your project report and that will give a lot of value addition, a lot of weightage to your report and obviously uh, marks would also come with that. So uh, a research process is something which starts with formulation of a research objective that what exactly you are going to find out, you know, what is your, or it can start with a problem they say that you see that, okay, this is the problem area and uh, nobody has looked into it. And this is the problem which is reoccurring uh, in a particular uh, field. So why don't I work with on this and try to find it? Like now, in, during this pandemic, there is a high research on the vaccine for this virus, coronavirus. So there is a problem. So to, uh, we, here they started with a problem because the uh, COVID-19 when it started, it came as a problem and then people started falling ill. So they started with a problem and now doing their research. So similarly, you have to build up your research on either a problem, either a question or, or even a topic that is of your interest. So you have to find out that what exactly I'm going to do in my research. Then formulate your research objectives. What are the objectives? What exactly I'm going to find out from this research? The review of related, this is very, very important because you feel a uh, this is what is the problem area and uh, I need to find answer to this and you start your research uh, without even doing your literature review, uh, finding out what is the literature already published on that particular topic and by the, when you complete it and your faculty member or your guide might say, oh, this has already been done by somebody else and this, there is already a solution to this. So without knowing the solution, you can, I mean, without knowing this, you cannot start. So it is very extremely important for you to review the literature, what is available on a particular topic, and only after that, clear out your questions, clear out the you are going in the right direction. So all things are very important. You know that you are going to be Really sorry to interrupt, ma'am. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. You are not audible. A call? Maybe, maybe I can use the... Okay, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so, so any uh, kind of project that you are looking for, you should start with a proper standard research process. So after reviewing of your literature, you can again go back and then you come to know, okay, okay, there is already a solution on the problem which you thought was a problem, but there is already a solution to it. And then you can go back and formulate your question, reframe your question again. Uh, so then comes the formula of hypothesis if there are any but I'll not talk about it more here because that is more for the PhD scholars and uh, then to 
actually design or uh, have a methodology for your uh, research you know that how you are going about going to go about doing your research so designing the tools the data collection then actually collecting the data then analyzing the data and drawing conclusion or finding out the results after finding out the re results are you, uh, it, it might be for an uh, for an assignment uh, of your uh, for any kind of an assignment for your academic work then you have to make a report of it and submit it to your institute or to your uh, department other than that uh, if it is at the higher level like if there are if it is a masters research work or a phd research work then generally the researcher will try to uh, uh, you know uh, convey the result or the research work to other researchers in his or her field or to other people um, all over the world and how do they do that they do it with the help of publishing so they will publish their research work this is the uh, they will publish their research work and try to reach out to other researchers which will be helpful for other researchers when they do their literature review so as you have gone through various other uh, to, uh, research articles or books when you did your own research similarly your research work when published the others will use it for their own research purpose so that is how the knowledge of the world is going to go on increasing so writing of the report and the other and reporting research findings now we come to electronic resources so uh, i'll focus mostly on electronic resources only because uh, right now this is what is going is going to help you all uh, than the physical resources so electronic information resources refer to those material which require computer access uh, to access the data from this resources so it's as simple as that there are different types of electronic resources there is e journal e books full text databases index abstracting databases reference databases numeric and statistical databases e images or e audio and visual resources so journals as i said as a physical journal it is only in the electronic format which is called electronic journal i have explained it to you before that it is a scholarly uh, article collection and which comes out in a particular frequency periodically ebooks ebooks are similar to any uh, physical book but only in an electronic format then full text databases is like a database where you will get uh, articles from different publishers under a single roof so under a single database then indexing and abstracting service uh, abstracting databases are the tertiary resources uh where which i said ki will actually point you out to the electronic journal article so it will point out point it point you out to the primary resources then reference databases uh like your dictionaries and encyclopedias in digital format numerical and statistical like census which gives you know numbers or any other kind of a, a statistical database which will actually give give you the statistics uh statistical information images of course in the electronic format and audio visual resources so these are different electronic resources and we have access to many of these i mean we, the library subscribes to many of these so our electronic uh, collection includes ebooks e journal e databases and e research tools uh, so professor mm M. sharma library's e collection you can see in e journals we have uh, these many publishers in ebooks then we have research tools and we have databases as well as i said ki literature review you have to actually do your literature study first when you start with any kind of your project report your assignment or your research work so it is important in shaping the research problem as i said that you will come to know that there, this problem has already been solved by some other researcher it will be helpful for you also because till now you are thinking that this is the problem but the answer is already there in the literature so it is going to help you in that or helps to set relationship between your research and the body of knowledge related to your research so whatever is available uh, in particular area what in which you are doing research it will you know give you a relationship uh, between your topic and the overall research that is available on a particular topic so you will know that where your research stands or fits into the knowledge or into the uh, related knowledge of your um, area of interest in why literature review it is to convey the previous knowledge established on the topic and 
their uh, strength or weaknesses so supposedly that you go through the literature you you, you come to know that the problem area in which you are doing research uh, is not yet answered so you can always find out that what what are the strengths of course and what has already been found out and already established and but there might be some weakness areas where you you see that not much work is done you know so you can start with those weakness areas and uh, start your research in those areas so uh, it actually tells you so before you even decide uh, that what topic you are going to um, actually start with you know you uh, this literature review is going to help you in deciding or on focusing on a particular topic as well broadly you can start with a topic go on reading reading try to find out what is happening in that particular area the latest happenings latest up to dates and then find out that this is seems to be the weakness area because there is not much talked about in this particular so that is where you can choose you can pick up that and start your research on that so to identify and clarify concepts vocabulary see every topic or every uh, area have their own vocabulary they have their own terminology terms which we are initially not familiar with but as you read you come to know okay, in this particular area okay this is called like in computer science it there are new new words that are coming up and then sometimes the newer technologies you are not aware then you google out and you see okay, okay this is what it means you know you hear from others so that way every subject area have their own terminology they have their own vocabulary. vocabulary it is very easy to get familiarized i mean it is necessary to get familiarized with this vocabulary when you are particular when you are going to work on a particular area and so literature review is also going to help on that so you have to keep reading uh, first you begin with reading uh, before you start with anything to just by the gap in research if i also told that why you are doing a research on this particular because you feel that there is a gap there is a weakness there is not much published in the particular area and that is why i have selected this so literature review will help you to understand uh, the research and also it will help to so this is like you try to figure out that which is the area which you are going to work on or you actually work out your title of your research and the other part is also for you to know uh, that which is the uh, methodology that has been adopted by other researchers you know because when you have to decide upon your own methodology to do a particular research you have to know exactly uh, that it will really help you from other researchers that what were the methodologies that they had adopted and accordingly you can work out on your own methodology identify other scholars see other scholars to know other scholars to follow them to know that who are doing research in this particular area that is also very important so to identify the scholars in your research to ensure that no past research has been done on the current research topic you have to find out actually that no research has been done and then only you can pick up your own research topics uh so uh, identify relevant resources print maybe print plus electronic analyze uh, the resources and critically evaluate the content summarize the content write the review and organize your review so this is how your literature review first you find out that what are what has been published in your particular area you get familiarized with the vocabulary uh, then you try to analyze key what are this uh, the content what is already been published and already been researched on and what can you take as your topic then what you have to do is you have to give a background of your um, of your for your project work for your research work for in your report you have to give a background and that is nothing but the your literature review so you have to start with what has been published and what are the uh, strong areas of research what has been established in a particular on a on a particular area uh, uh, by, by the researchers and what are the weaknesses then and all this you have to do and also write it down you know you have to actually review it in your paper so your uh, your report should always begin with an introduction and then a literature review you know that gives a lot of authenticity to you. even when you have to publish some research articles um, in journals this there is a format there is a format a layout of how you actually go about and write your article so in that literature review plays a very very important and essential role so you it is very very important to have so if you practice you start practicing right from your uh, ug time you i mean your ug uh, that uh, whatever topic you have been assigned to to do your 
project works, to do your assignments, you start with literature review, you know, that these are the good practices that uh, you can begin with and that will, you know, that gets inculcated in your uh, uh, work, in your work, you know, working style. So the first thing is that you find out that what is already there and then you start with your own, which is a very, very good practice and it is going to help you always, uh, starting from your small project assignments to your bigger research projects, you know, which will, you might handle later. So uh, once you have decided your topic, now how do you actually go and search, you know? So uh, uh, in search also, there is a way of building up your query. Uh, sometimes you search and you say, Ki, Are, nothing is available, but is it possible in such a huge, vast, vast knowledge database of the world, which I say and which is ever increasing, is it possible that you didn't find anything on your particular topic? So there is something, uh, you know, so you have to then know that there is something wrong in your query building. So you have to accordingly build up your query. Either you start from a very broad topic. Supposedly I give chemical engineering in a particular database or in a, the number of results, it will run into lakhs, you know, because you have very broadly searched. So then you feel, ke, okay, this is very broad. So I need to know, narrow it down. So you slowly go and go on narrowing it down. Reverse way is that you start from a very, very narrow where you actually say that this is a problem. This was, this is the area in India, in this particular time of period, this was done. So if you're looking out a very narrow, a very specific kind of uh, information, there might be a possibility that uh, in Maharashtra, supposedly, if I say that, particularly in Maharashtra, if such kind of work was done. So then you uh, uh, you come to know that, oh, there is nothing. So then you can broaden it up. So from Maharashtra, you go ahead and say India, and you know, then Asia and beyond. So according to the results that you get, you can either broader, broad your, uh, broaden your query, or you can narrow it down. So it depends on what kind of results you get. So you have to very carefully try to build up your query as well. It is very important. Secondly, you can use Boolean operators. So this is nothing but the and or if else then statement. Those are there, no? then you do an advanced search. You say this particular author and this particular book. So those are nothing but the Boolean operators. So it will give you specifically because on a particular, uh, by a particular author on a, or on a particular title, there might be 100 books, even in the library catalog when you search. When you just say uh, physical chemistry and uh, you get a huge number, you know, you might run into hundreds of books. Now you don't know that within that, which one should I choose? So then you can use a Boolean operator here. When a faculty member, while taking your class, mentions about certain author uh, and says, okay, okay, this is the author I want you all to read this book. So that is when uh, you come to the library, when you search a particular author, again, you get a huge number. So there, this is a time when you use the Boolean operator. So you can uh, join the author name and the title of the book together with an and, and then you arrive at a specific book that you're looking for. So it will give you a narrow result and then choosing from that narrow result becomes easier for you. So Boolean uh, operators are important. Then use synonyms. Uh, if you don't find anything, synonyms are, uh, you might all know that uh, similar meaning words. Uh, so this is where um, you look for a particular uh, topic, you give some keywords in your search and you don't find anything. So you say, okay, so this might be called something else. So this is where your literature review, as I said, when you do your literature review, uh, your vocabulary on that particular topic is built up. So you come to know of the, you come across new terminologies which you need to note down. And then when you're doing your own query building, when you're trying to search for information for your own, that is when these particular uh, synonyms, this particular vocabulary is going to help you arrive at the specific thing that you're looking for. Then use uh, advanced features of the search. Always use the advanced search, you know, that will give you more specific results, more, uh, uh, instead of, uh, yeah, more specific, it can help you to give you the exact result that you're looking for. Then to uh, choose from the smaller result becomes easier for you. Identically, you can't go on pages and pages. When the result in generally Google, when you even Google it out and you come across some uh, thousands of results, generally beyond two pages, a researcher will not go or a searcher will not go. So when you search, you go for the first page and you go at the most, you go at the second page, you generally don't go to the third page, you know, you then you build up your query again. So be sure 
try to use advanced search so that the uh, actually what you're looking for might be on the fifth page you know it, if you really choose very broadly it might go in the fifth page and you will not land up only on the fifth page to look for the information because you already get tired after going through the first two pages so this is where this is where we recommend that you use advanced features of the search when you go to the advanced search you get specific results identify authors of your research area identify journals of your research area so you find out people who you generally do research on a particular area so this is going to help you and also uh, the journals generally uh, journals are subject they have a particular scope they have their subject specific journals so you have to identify that which are the journals which would be helpful for me so you can really search within the journal but just pick the latest issues of the journal and surf it every week coming to the library or even in uh, so you keep a habit as you read newspapers every day to get the news of the latest happenings. Similarly, the, if you can identify some journals uh, which are strong in your uh, area of interest, then probably you can kind of serve the newer issues. Every time the newer issue to the journal is added, there are RSS feeds, there are so many things, notifications, which you can uh, put up. Uh, I'm audible because my internet connection is showing. I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. So you need to identify this journal area. So as I said, that when you build up your vocabulary on a particular subject, here you can see you can make a you know mind map. This this a map of the concept map or a mind map on your particular topic. So uh, this year you can see it is a disaster management in libraries. Uh, so this is from my area and this is how I have made a mind map that what all can be included under this disaster, disaster management in libraries. So there can be disaster plan content, emergency contact numbers or you know disasters which are man-made or natural types. So I have tried to uh, you know uh, uh, tried to put all the terms and terminologies that I feel would fall under this umbrella topic and try to make a mind map of it. So before you begin, you make a mind map. So while searching, it becomes much easier for you. And it also helps you in planning out of writing your report. When you're writing your report, you know that what hierarchy uh, a particular topic will lie. And within that, then what you need to and how can you bifurcate then to into under which topic or sub uh, the other. Uh, and which could be a, the main topic, which could be the subtopic. So it helps you uh, in understanding all this, you know. So it is very important that you first make a mind map or a concept map on your particular topic. How do you start? So uh, now, as I said, that we, uh, ICT library, subscribe to a lot of electronic resources and one of them, the databases, which falls under tertiary uh, uh, resources, which I mentioned. So you start with the tertiary resources. We subscribe to Scopus, we subscribe to Web of Science, we subscribe to SciFinder, we subscribe to Reaccess. So these are the tertiary resources from where you begin with. So you get, you know, uh, this, um, these are um, databases uh, which are uh, specially specially designed uh, for uh, the science and technology. You know, so it is, and it has a lot of uh, complex structure. The platform for used for these databases are uh, you know highly complex and uh, has a lot of uh, artificial intelligence elements into it. So it is really going to help you. In your search instead of Google, when you start with Google, of course, you can start with Google Scholar, which is also a very good tool. But since we subscribe to Scopus and Web of Science, these are specifically designed for science and technology. And the platforms are really robust and it has a very good search uh, technology, searching technology. So to begin with this, it is definitely going to help you a lot in finding out the precise information or the right authentic information that you're looking for. Uh, so, these are, these are the tertiary resources, so I recommend everybody that when you start searching for something, you use the tertiary resources, start with Scopus, start with Web of Science. Then comes the uh, electronic books, okay, so as I said, the primary uh, resources, so ultimately when you, even if you start with tertiary resources, it is going to point you out to the book chapters or to the journal articles. So what is an electronic book? Uh, as I said, in an electronic format. This is just a small A which you might feel interested in that Michael Hart, founder of Project Guttenberg, 
invented e-book first in 1971 when the physical book was actually scanned and an electronic book was formed in 1971 just for your interest uh, so the e-books procured by professor mm sharma library uh, we have procured books from different publishers we have almost access to 700 electronic books so we have uh, books from taylor and Par francis publication elsevier Uh, the platform for Elsevier is Science Direct, which I think most of you all use commonly for your searches. Then we have American Chemical Society, that is ACS book publications. We have Royal Society for Chemistry, that is RSC, uh, publisher publishing book, published books. Then we have Beagle, which are, who is another publisher, and Pearson also for your e-textbooks. So these are all the renowned publishers uh, in science and technology from whom we have procured our electronic books. This is what we have actually procured. We have paid and bought those books. The previous slide, which uh, which I showed you, has uh, the names of the publishers. So those are the books which we have actually paid and procured for our library. But there are also so many open access electronic books. Uh, you all must be aware of open access, which is like without subscription or without payment, the information is accessible to all, everybody, each and everybody. So that is called. It is another model of publishing where the author says that let my work be accessible to everybody. I don't want anybody to pay for my um, research for my research results which I am publishing. so that is called as open access so under open access electronic books also you will get access to lot many electronic books so one is your national digital library of india that is ndli which is a government initiative so where uh, iit kharagpur handles the database where from all over india the libraries contribute uh, their electronic resources to this library so and you can be member of this library go to national digital library and you can register yourself under that or you can take our help to register and uh, after that you will get access to all the electronic books that are available in national digital library then google books of course that too you must have come across many a times when you do a google search you come across google books so there were the books e books are freely available project gattenberg which is which was a project uh, which was uh, in 1971 when they uh, which uh, in the my previous uh, slide which i just mentioned that in 1970 the first e book was uh, made uh, that was under project gattenberg uh, published under project gattenberg so under this project there are a lot many electronic books whose copyright has been Uh, has got over you know those kind of classics or uh, those kind of very old uh, books uh, where the authors have died many many years ago and the copyright is also over those are digitized because you know anybody can digitize everything you know anything that whatever if i supposedly decide that okay one of the library books i'll digitize and keep i cannot keep that because i have to take a because there are copyrights associated with it author rights associated with that particular because it is the Uh, knowledge the uh, of some author who has written it or that some person uh, so i have to take permission before i digitize it so i cannot go and digitize it so i have to very clearly see that which are which are the books which are not under the copyright and only those can be digitized so project gattenberg did that they actually picked up the books which have lost this copyright and which are, where the copyright has got over and those were digitized and are now made available to everybody free of cost then directory of open access books so doab so doab so this is a very good initiative which started from uk and uk is very strong in open access uh, uh, the europe is actually very strong in open access so they have a movement called open access they say that all the researchers should make their information available to a to lay person everybody uh, without charging or without selling their books or without uh, adding a subscription cost to their journals Uh, so directory of open access if you go to this link you will find lot many electronic books you can search on your topic you can get complete access full access first page to last page in electronic format then hathi trust digital library is also there where you can click and see world digital library is another open o a p e n that is online library and publication platform is another where you get access to all the electro all the uh, electronic books so one 
is the electronic books which are subscribed by us and other is these open access books which are accessible to you. So in open, this is just a screenshot of open, you can see that self-assembled molecules. This book is completely available and below the uh, image of the book you can see that there is a download. So if you just click and it's a Springer Nature publication, okay. So if you just click on that and uh, you will get access to all the chapters and somewhere so they will allow you to access the complete book. But you go to the right source, you know, uh, the right, uh, what do you say, the right platform because uh, People also go to sites which are, you know, illegal and uh, here properly the publisher themselves have published it in the open access forum and that is how. But uh, those sites which uh, pirate, you know, they, which will copy from others, assemble, try to assemble from here and there the, and then try to put up their platform as an open access, be careful. Please do not visit such, uh, such kind of websites. Go to the proper open access websites and try to use the electronic resources. Then comes the electronic journals. Now this is another primary source of information which is very important for a researcher because in books uh, it is like for a book to the author to write and get it published it takes time and uh, so the whatever information is there in a book and of course the purpose of the book is to uh, give the fundamentals more you know whereas journals will actually give you articles of the latest happenings, the latest research that is happening in a book. E-journal is nothing but again, a journal in an electronic format, like a physical journal. I already spoke to you about how a journal is different than a magazine. So it has scholarly research articles. So uh, the historical, so this is another just uh, for your information that evolution of electronic journal has been traced to 1960s. So before the electronic book was born, an electronic journal was already born. So they are seniors in that way. Electronic journal is senior to a electronic book. And, uh, so it was uh, first full fledged electronic journal in 1980 at New Jersey when exactly it, uh, it was initiated in 1960s, but in 1980, a full fledged electronic journal they started publishing, uh, was established and started publishing articles in the electronic format from 1980 onwards. E-journals subscribed by our library. Uh, we have Wiley, Springer Nature, Taylor and Francis, Beagle, Themy, Sage, American Chemical Society, Elsevier, Royal Society for Chemistry, Bentham Science, and our latest new edition that is called Showy, which is a video journal. So as you can see that these are the renowned publishers in the field of science and technology, and we subscribe to almost all the renowned publishers, something or the other of our interest, I mean of our subject area pertaining to chemical engineering, chemical technology, chemistry and our allied subjects. So we uh, subscribe to all these renowned publishers and our latest edition, Jovi, how it is different, it is a video journal. So uh, as you can see in a Wiley or a Taylor and Francis journal, you open, you'll see article in the printed form, format. Uh, similarly, uh, it, it, a PDF of the article is available when you search for any electronic journal but in Jovi if you search something you come across small small videos you know videos of research so actually they will show you lab research work you know, they will actually show you the experiments that happened in the labs uh, and the research which was done and those experiments are recorded and are published in this video journal it's new you can explore it further I'll show you how you are going to access all this Similar to open access electronic books, there are open access electronic journals as well. So we have this national library of uh, information service that is NLIST, uh, which is a government initiative again. Then directory of open access journals like DOAB, this DOAJ, where you just click on this and you will get all the electronic journals that are published in an open access format. So it is open to you, you can download. Uh, any article which you wish to, you can search within it. It is a database of open access journals. Then open access journals, then PLOS.org, eCommons. So these are all published journal articles in open access format. Other than that, you know, there is something called as preprint servers as well. Now, what are these preprint servers? Are like I am doing my research, and uh, I've got the result of my research, and now I have. Done my manuscript and I'm sending it to the publisher. 
uh, it is not very easy to get published. It takes time. So when you um, do your research and start writing, I, I once your manuscript is ready and you send it to different publishers, it is peer reviewed. You know, peer reviewed means experts of experts of uh, those areas, those research areas, will actually go through your research article, uh, find out whether uh, you know. Uh, authenticity of your research they will write to um, and only after that it will be published so it takes time it takes months you know and sometimes a year also as certain journals take a lot of time so uh, before that uh, then you have to wait for your research uh, to be conveyed to others you, know, you have to wait for it so in this waiting period there is something called as preprint servers so ARXIB, which is started by Cornell University, basically they started with physics, but now they have expanded. So these are the preprint servers where actually you can share your research. You can put up your research in this, pre of course, but it is not peer review. So it is just a kind of a database where you can add your research work. And the, the others will comment on it. You know, uh, others will give their comments uh, on your research. So this is how uh, the preprint servers, and now uh, we have started. Uh, now latest uh, chemistry preprint servers has also. Seen. I'll I'll send you a link of that later, which is uh, again initiated by uh, Royal Society for Chemistry and ACS. They have come together and started a chemistry preprint server. So here also, so while searching for information, you can search in this preprint servers also because here you will get the very latest kind of information, the latest which is not even published, but is already there, might be there in the preprint servers. The researchers might have contributed it or have must have been put it up, uh, uploaded it in this preprint servers. So here also you can get a lot of information without any cost, free of cost. Uh, so access to, so this was all about the electronic books, the electronic databases, the electronic journals. Now how do you actually access this? So you access this by our library catalog uh, page or the portal when we can say ictlibrary.firstrate.in. If you click on this, you'll see, you can search the catalog. On the upper window, you can see the search library catalog. So you can put, the, put in your keyword and make a search and you will get all the books uh, or reports or the physical books that are available in the library. The titles of those will be available to you and then you can decide which book you can get issued from the library. What we have or you can form also, uh, you know, download a bibliography on a particular topic, how many books are there. And so it is for the, your library search. And now earlier it was, if you all remember, we used to come to the library and search on those terminals which are available in the library. But now with this, we uh, during this pandemic time, we have gone actually into web or back, that is what you call it, call it as like uh, catalog which can be searched from anywhere, any place on the internet. So from this uh, site, you can actually make a search, you go to this site and you can actually make a search and see that what is available in our library. And below you can see uh, that there are, and plus this is a union catalog of all the three libraries, huh? the Mumbai, um, uh, from uh, Mumbai as well as the Bhubaneswar campus as well as uh, Jalna Maratwada campus. So it is kind of a union catalog. So if you want, you can search only for Mumbai. If you want, you can search the other places as well. Uh, and below you can see that uh, there are links to all the electronic books, journals, databases. So when you are in campus, see remember all these databases are IP based. So when you are in campus, if you click on this, you will immediately get access to it. From home, you will not be able to access through this, but you will be able to access it through remote access. So I will show you how remote access also works. Okay. Otherwise, when you are in campus, you just go to this website and click on any of the uh, database that you are looking for and it will open out for you like Scopus, Reaccess. You just have to click, Reaccess will start and you can start using it. You just click on the ebooks of Elsevier uh, under Science Diet, you will come across all the electronic books that we uh, of that. Uh, LGBR publishes as well as those which we have subscribed or which we have procured for our libraries. You will get a list of those also. But from your home, you will get links to all this but through a remote access portal. Other e-resources that we have, we have Derwent Innovation, 
which is a patent database which we have newly started subscribe it is again a paid service it is a newly uh, subscription that we have started so we are now slowly uh, trying to arrange uh, demo sessions for it to get it more popularized and to know exactly how to use it uh, but the link is available on the remote access you can also explore it on your own then nptel lectures are available um, a link is available nptel also where the lectures video lectures of a uh, lot of lot of other faculties also other institute faculties like iits and uh, they have also contributed to this video lectures so on a particular topic you can watch any of those videos for the ganga which is a thesis repository so the previous work done by previous researchers this that are submitted by phd students those are available on this go, show the ganga which is again a government initiative so it is kind of a thesis repository of india so when you uh, when you search for books and journal articles in the library you also please go through show the ganga and try to find out that what kind of research work has been done in india on a particular topic or even for your project works it will be very very helpful then comes show the gangotri which is uh, on the ongoing thesis so if you want to know ki this thesis are already going on this topic has been taken by someone so i really have to this is mostly for the phd scholars uh, where the um, phd students have to actually choose a topic which is unique which nobody else is doing you know so in that case show, show the gangotri is very helpful because they come to know that these are the ongoing thesis so i shouldn't pick up anything from those also go to show the ganga and see if any uh, people have worked on any of this and then decide at which particular topic they are going to work on then again google patents which is freely available which is again a patents so you as you go to google scholar google has specialization so when you search for research articles then you have to go to google scholar and search through that similarly this is google patents when you actually go to you type in google google patents it will give you a link you click on that link and then whatever you search you will only get result as patents how do you go about remote access so for remote access you have to write to me at my email id and say that uh, through your institutional email id when you visit the library for your issuing or return of book you use your id card isn't it it is compulsory for you to bring your identity card with you because without that you will not issue a book or return a book from you so similarly for remote access what is important is to have an institutional email id so if you don't have an institutional email id please get one made from our ipc that is information processing center from uh, this is madhuri dicholkar who heads the ipc so with her help you can get your institutional I, uh, email id made and once your institutional email id is made then you write to me saying this is my institutional email id and i want access to remote access to i want access to this electronic resources from my home so then i can arrange for a remote access for you i'll make a login and password for you and uh, with that with the help of that you can access the electronic so this is the uh, uh, portal the uh, screenshot of that page you just have to put your login and password okay if uh, if time permits i will just quickly show i can show you also how it looks like then uh, electronic research tool other than these resources we have lot of electronic research tools as well so we have reference manager uh, mendeley and uh, when you are searching for information and uh, as i said and uh, uh, you do your literature review and you uh, complete your project writing your project or writing your research paper what is important is at the end you should have references from where you have referred because that will add authenticity to your project or to your research paper without that it won't be accepted so you have to say that what are the references that that you have used so when you uh, write these references uh, if you want to publish it internationally even or even nationally when you want to publish your research work in a uh, article then there are various styles of writing this bibliography you know this references that you write at the end it is not that you keep uh, straight away write according to what you want author colon and author's name title colon and title's name no there are various styles for writing this so uh, you have to know those styles if you want to uh, if you um, try to publish something or uh, with a public particular publisher the publisher will tell you that this is our style so please write according to this style so then you have to know that what are these different styles so to handle your these references there are 
these reference managers, which is called Mendeley and also Dero. So Mendeley and uh, we get it through our Scopus subscription. It is an LCBR product, so we get it free of cost, but only the online version of it we get. So we can uh, further, if you are interested, we can have small sessions on these reference managers, especially for the master students uh, who can know how to use these tools, but these are available in the library. Then there are plagiarism check software. So when you have to submit something, now plagiarism check is extremely important because uh, because of the copyrights, you just cannot copy something from someone and put it as your own, compile it together and send it as your report. So you have to be very, very careful about that. In academics too, the UGC has announced that your plagiarism check, your similarity index should be less than 10%. Okay. So if something goes beyond 10% for PhD scholars, it is rejected. Their work is rejected. This guide will not take it further only, will not even sign their report. So you have to be very careful of what you take from others. You you can, of course, in your literature review, what others have said, that only you have to put in. But in your own words, you just cannot copy-paste. You cannot cut-paste. Just cut it from there and paste it. So that is not at all allowed. It is against copyright. So you have to be very careful while writing your report. It should be in your own words. Even what other person is saying, but it should be, it should come in your own words and you have to give credit to that person as well. You have to write in your reference that this is what I have, this thing I have picked up from this particular source, from this particular reference. Perfect. So that is very, very important. Then writing help like uh, Grammarly is available, Ginger and others are available, but we subscribe to Grammarly. Then for formatting, there is a typeset. We don't have subscription to any of it, but overly flat text is something called open source. Again, an open access tool, which can be used by anybody. Then choose your journal. When you have to choose your journal, where I don't need to publish, there is Scopus, JCR, Sinago, and other things which are available. For every researcher, I would recommend that for every researcher, there is a, now a identity, you know, an ID code is given. As your roll number is your identity, when you enter your institute, every time you have to say for your attendance, for your examinations, your roll number is important. Similarly, for a researcher, internationally, there is a unique code number, which is called as ORCID. So every researcher has to have this ORCID uh, registration and have that identity for himself and her or herself. And this is what identity, this identity number he or she has to use when they are publishing their research work. Now, this is a typical publication process where you submit a, a paper, then pre uh, view, reviewing is done, peer reviewing is done. Then again, they might say, okay, okay uh, this is, you know, the editor will look into it then they will tell you whether it is accepted or not or, or some changes are to be made, they will send it to you. This is for just for you to understand how a scholarly communication works, okay? And if maybe anybody of you all, if there are master students and if they are interested in getting their work published, uh, then it will be helpful for them. Then your final confirmation comes from publisher and finally it is published. Uh, so publishing, while well, publishing you have to choose that which journal you need to um, uh, publish into because you can't write to any journal saying okay, if you start writing to nature which is the highest impact factor they are definitely going to reject your work because it has to, uh, you have to know that what is the scope of the journal and uh, you can't just go by the popularity of the journal or the impact factor of the journal. The subject coverage of the journal, the uh, depth of the subject covered and accordingly you have to then submit your uh, manuscript to that or, uh, you know, uh, go to that particular publisher. So, uh, for journals also, there are kind of, one can say, there are rankings, where which is called an impact factor, that how much impact the journal articles published in that particular journal has made on research, that is measured. And there is, it is called as, it has a formula for it, the formula I mentioned here, it is called impact factor. Now that you are going to be a part of the research, uh, since uh, ICT is known uh, for uh, its research for ages and we actually uh, start uh, inculcating research values right from your bachelor's level, isn't it? You do your um, seminar papers right at the bachelor's level and so once you are a ICT student, uh, you are are indirectly a part of this scholarly communication even at the bachelor's level. So for that reason I have added this publishing also where you can know uh, that how the scholarly communication works. So similarly journals have their impact factors. So highest, the higher the impact factor, higher is the value of the journal. The 
impact that the journal has made in that particular research area. How do you choose your journal? You choose your journal Scopus in Scopus or Web of Science. You can search whether the journal has been included. Since Scopus and Web of Science are the very uh, renowned and very, um, what do you say, they do a lot of um, filtration. You know, they will not accept anything. So just to get uh, a journal to be a part of Scopus is a, a, of a lot of value for that particular publisher and that particular journal. So it's like Scopus index journal. This is Scopus index journal means automatically means that the journal is highly valued. So you start with Scopus, find out from Web of Science that which are the journals, whether that journal which you are going to approach that is covered under Scopus or Web of Science or not. Elsevier has journal finder, you know, uh, this is the website. So you can go to this website, put your title, put your abstract into that and make a search. They will give you uh, a list of journals and they will say that this is the journals where your research paper might get published, the scope and all matches. So they will give you alternatives, you know, to find find the journal where you're going to publish. So this is free, of course, this is open for all, anybody can do it. Springer Journal Suggester is also something similar. Then UGC care list. What happened is that now uh, uh, in between a um, lot of, uh, one can say journals, uh, see journals also have their own values as I said, that some, and it is measured with that impact factor. So some are highly impact factors, so you know that you're taking the right information and as you have, you know, fake products. Similarly, there are fake journals also at times. So uh, to keep out of those fake journals, to keep out, as I said, that the fake news which is uh, uh, you know circulated on this WhatsApp. So similarly, uh, this fake kind of or low level uh, research papers are um, are also get published in some journals which are which are not valued or which are called as predatory journals. So uh, to keep you out of that, UGC has actually uh, brought out a care list where they actually list out journals. So uh, for uh, PhD students, it is compulsory to get their at least one article published on their research. So that time they have to be very careful and publish it only in the UGC listed, care listed journal or Scopus or Web of Science listed journal only. If they publish in any other journal, that is not accepted, not accepted by UGC. And so their degree can, you know, uh, 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 it will take time for them to get your degree until and unless uh, they don't publish in this UGC care list indexed journal or Scopus index journal or Web of Science index journal. So it is very important to know also that where you are publishing. SciMago is another website which gives you uh, the impact factor of journals. So after publishing also, post-publication also, a researcher needs to actually um, publicize their research work his or her research work. So it can be done through blogs, social media, scientific conventions, reference platforms, websites, uh, then uh, research gate kind of uh, databases where you can register yourself and speak about your research, where others will comment. You keep following other people who are on similar, other researchers who are working on a similar uh, topic will follow you. So this is very, very important. So it is not that once you publish, you keep quiet. You have to do a lot of things post-publication also uh, to actually um, uh, see that what impact your research has made in your area, you know, on the other research. So first publication, you have academic forums, academic networks, scientific conventions, and so many things. So like a journal has, uh, as I said, key um, a, a measurement for its value like the impact factor it will measure that what kind of impact the journal has made similarly a researcher also has a uh, impact of his or her research so the h index is an author level matrix it is called matrix which will actually measure the impact of that researcher on uh, on uh, the uh, of what they have worked on so on other researchers or other scientists or other scholars so the index is based again there is a formula to calculate it so how much my work has been cited by others other researchers on that it is dependent on that so on the basis of that a researcher's h index is also measured so under google scholar profile if you are, you must be aware of google scholar google scholar when you you can make can make your own profile also and uh, so this I have picked up uh, Professor A.B. Pandits, our Vice Chancellor's um, 
profile and you can see here that H index it is showing 82 which is very high and this is sometime back so if I have not taken the very latest one uh, it might the number might have increased so you can see the H index is 82 so it is extremely high uh, nationally you know it is very very high even internationally I would say so you can see that that is how the H index or the researchers impact uh, on the in their field is measured I just spoke about predatory publishing that one has to be very careful about so they will generally accept articles quickly and with no peer review anything can be books and they might charge fees for the researcher that if you pay so much we'll immediately publish it so you should keep out of all this and uh, try to publish in good journals only okay so with that i gave you a, a idea a picture of what a scholarly communication in is and in that i tried to fit in that how library fits into your literature review when you do your literature review and uh, what these electronic resources are going to help you in which are the electronic resources that you subscribe to and where do you start with you start with those tertiary ones tertiary electronic resources okay and, uh, if you're going ahead and doing your publishing and all what, what care should be taken uh, this is uh, all about uh, this session and uh, if you have any questions you can ask or should I, do you all want me to show how um, uh, the remote access works? Yes ma'am, yes ma'am. Ma'am. Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. So, Yes, ma'am. Can you see? Can you see, see my screen? Oh, I have to share it again, is it? Share screen. Okay. Can you see, see the screen? Yes, ma'am. So this is the uh, remote access page. So here, as I said, that you have to write to me with your institutional email ID, and I'll send you your login credentials. So here, I'll put libraries. Your email ID itself is your username. Again, you land up on this page. Is this page visible to you all? Yes, ma'am. Which, yes, ma uh, which lists out all the electronic resources. So here you can see that there are e-databases, followed by e-journals, followed by e-books. Okay. If you go uh, A to Z also, there are various, if you go here, here it will give you a listing, A to Z listing of what are the electronic resources that our library subscribes to. Can you see here? So these are all, okay? And to know that which is the database and all, the previous list which I showed you, which are electronic journals, which are. So I'll just click on one of the, let's go to Scopus. Since I said that you begin your research or your search with Scopus, let's go to Scopus. See, from there when I click to Scopus, it directly landed me on the Scopus page where I can start using it without asking for any username and password. So you put in your username and password only once when you log in into remote access and it will open out all the electronic resources for you directly. Except for SciFinder. SciFinder needs a different kind of registration. I mean, it requires a registration. Uh, so if anybody wants to access uh, SciFinder, they have to separately again write to me. Though the link is here, but the registration is not available here. So first, it is a one-time registration and it is mandatory. For SciFinder, you have to register first and only then it will ask for username and password again when you come on the SciFinder page. And with that only you will be able to access. Otherwise, Scopus, Reaccess, and all the other electronic journals and all, you will be able to access directly. So now here you can see I can type anything, any search. I'm just broadly putting any. And I 
say search. There is author search, there is affiliation search, there is advanced search as well. So you came to know how you are going to use remote access. Huh? You just have to click on the page, put in your login, you will land up on the page which has list of all the electronic resources. You click on any of the electronic resources, you will come directly to the page of that particular database or that particular journal. Okay. Now you can see with, uh, of course it was very broad, chemical uh, engine, uh, engineering that is what I put in, so you can see the result. So here uh, you are able to see, na, this is the list, the result that I have got and on the left hand side you can see that I can further uh, restrict my, limit my result into the year, I can see only 20, published in 2020. So in that also you can see already the 2021 publications are shown here, 286 are already published the next year's 2021 has already been in the line. This is very helpful in electronic resources. In printed, you will have to wait till actually the issue you get in your hand, isn't it? That it is sent by publisher, it comes to the library and only then you will be able to access it. It doesn't come before time, it always takes some time. But with electronic, so supposedly the January issue you will only get in February or March. But in electronic, you can see that you can now, right now access 2021 also. If you go through these articles, you see here a tab called View at Publisher. Okay, so as I said that Scopus is a tertiary database. It is an indexing and abstracting source which is now called as a citation database. So it will just guide you to the primary resources. It doesn't have information. It will just guide you to the information. So you feel that supposedly if I feel that this particular uh, inform uh, this particular article looks interesting for me, I further click on it, I get an abstract, I get an uh, abstract of it, the authors I come to know, and I feel that this is relevant, then I go to view at publisher. To complete, now this here you will only get the abstract, okay? but if I say view to publisher, I will go to the page, it, it will actually take me Okay, so here in remote access, you won't be able to go view at publisher directly, I suppose. So you have to note down that which is the journal and that, then you have to go to the e-journals and there you have to search that with particular in that within that journal. But if you are here in campus, if you click at view at publisher, it will directly take you to that particular journal article and you can download it. Now here, one more thing which I want to uh, tell you all and it is important that uh, there is something called a systematic downloading, which is prohibited, which is not allowed. So in a particular journal, if you find that there are a lot of, uh, lot of articles which are of um, relevance to you, which you want to access to, uh, please do not download it, uh, I mean too many in a particular day or in a particular time, you know. So if you uh, keep on continuously downloading uh, journal articles into your computer uh, for an, within an hour if you download somewhere around 100 articles and all your uh, you know the publishers feel that this has been done with some bad intention I mean who will read 100 articles at a time so why is somebody uh, downloading 100 articles within an hour so they feel that this is fishy and they stop access not only to you but to the whole institute even Professor Pandit is not going to be, won't be able to access anything if you do something wrong. Okay, so be careful about the systematic downloading. All this information is going to stay there for you. We are having subscription to it, so it's not going to go anywhere. So just keeping on downloading it to your uh, personal computer is not recommended at all. Even if you tomorrow visit the same site, that article is going to be there. And even after six months, it is going to be there. So don't keep on downloading it to your computer until and unless it is really essential. And be careful when you are downloading. Don't download too many at a time because the access is stopped. That is called a systematic download. Okay, so this is what Scopus looks like. Any questions regarding this? You would see that how remote access also works. Anything that you want to know more than this? Any questions? 
Thank you very much for your valuable and informative presentation. And I'm sure all of us will be with your questions. With your permission, we would be taking questions from our attendees. People can start asking. Good evening, ma'am. This is Devendra. Yes. Ma'am, I have already been a few days back regarding, the, regarding for the remote access. Okay. okay, you're not received it as yet, is it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I was a little busy in some other words, so I'll do it. I'll definitely do it. If you can once again send me the email, it will be helpful because otherwise it must have gone somewhere down. So it is better that you do it right now again, once again, then I can do it immediately. Okay, okay, thank you. Ma'am? Yeah? Um. Ma'am, I wanted to ask that uh, regarding some recent innovations, like any innovation regarding COVID, if the subject is not published or too much information is not there or something is newly patented, how will we get information regarding the same? That is what I said, that uh, there is something called, which I showed, no? pre-print pre server. So uh, on these topics, you can actually go through this preprint servers. For chemistry also, for medicine also, there are these preprint servers where you can actually go and see that what has been people are sharing with each other, what has been uh, yet to publish, you know, what is yet to publish, and their work is research is going on that is available on these preprint servers. And also with lot, all these publishers, they have right now, you know, have if, even if you go to Scopus or if you, even if you go to Science Direct platform, you will see that there is a special window for uh, COVID-19 research, you know. So they have also all uh, tried to uh, make these uh, resources available, even if you don't subscribe to. Supposedly, uh, see everything we cannot subscribe to, whatever is available under, like Elsevier has so many journals, they might have thousands of journals, but we subscribe to a limited part of it, isn't it? We subscribe to 800 or uh, 1000 journals maybe. So what Elsevier has now done is, not only Elsevier, but other publishers as well, what they have done is that whatever is related to COVID, they have opened it out, you know, without any subscription. So if, if you are, we are subscribing to chemical engineering um, cluster, uh, uh, then also we are allowed to access the research related to COVID. So they have special tabs, they have this special A where you can actually access this, even if you don't subscribe to. So it's open. I mean, everybody has opened it out. All the publishers almost have opened. It is kind of a uh, social responsibility. Under social responsibility, they have done it. So you can try those. Try uh, visiting their websites. And as I, as I showed in Scopus, 2021 ka research papers are also ready right now. So please go through it. In Nature and all, a lot of it's published now in uh, uh, COVID. So please go through that and find out. You will definitely get some help. Thank you, ma'am. What is not published, you try in those preprint servers. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, yes. Ma'am, I want to ask uh, the question is uh, can, can we access uh, Bentham Science Journals from Remote Access? Yes, you can. Yes, we can. Uh, we because in that ma'am uh, it is showing a bad gateway as a message when uh, uh, we give browse Achha, when you click on it it gives gives you bad gateway yes ma'am okay so technically there might be some problem i'll get it checked okay, just drop me a mail on that so that i can forward it to the publishers so they will look into it their technical team will look into it yes ma'am thank you ma'am it is not possible for uh, the library staff to continuously look into each and every journal whether it is working each and every link which is working because there are many electronic resources so if you come across any such kind of problem technical issues while accessing please take a screenshot and send an email of that screenshot so then we can forward it to um, the technical team of the publishers and get it rectified as soon as possible
question can everyone use authenticate uh, authenticate cannot be used by everyone it is for the faculty so if you want to get something your document check you have to approach your guide and uh, for some reason if you are not able to connect your guide because the guide is traveling or something then you can approach the library you have to mail me uh, that research paper or that uh, 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 mail me the research paper which you want to get it authenticated to be checked in authenticate and uh, keep your guide also in the loop uh, then i can send you the report it takes about one day so you submit me today then i will only, only be able to give you the next day the report i can send you the report through email the guide has to approve of it directly students can't access authenticate okay ma'am uh, yeah. i have one more question that uh, the recent papers which are published uh, if they are not too much cited then how will we understand that the um, um, their content uh, should be taken or not with what reference we should go ahead uh, see, uh the citations work it is a time see only when the pub paper is published in the third year the citation starts because if i publish particularly in this year 2020 then the other researchers like you all who are doing their research will actually go through my paper and they will publish only when their manuscript is ready so definitely it is not going to be immediately so whatever is published in 2020 will only get start getting citations in 2023 i would say or 24 because the process takes time but if you feel it is not that only getting cited uh, if the paper has got cited that means it is authentic it is not that see i told you ki the right resources if you take the paper from the right resources you see that it is a good impact factor journal or a good published book then definitely there is no harm in taking all that so it is not that it depends on the citations you know it is uh, it is like from where which is the source the resource that you are using it from where that particular information has come that adds the value or authenticity to that particular research so don't go by citations there you can straight away uh, you can see that which journal that article has been published and what is the impact factor of that i mean i have how valued that journal is if it is index if you go that's why i said ki you begin with scopus you begin with a web of science because what is indexed by scopus or a web of science Uh, they do lot of scrutiny and only then they accept a particular journal you know they have their own um, uh, own procedure and own ways of uh, selecting a particular journal to be indexed and it is very very complex and it is very uh, so only those journals which are really really uh, good in their um, impact those are chosen by uh, scopus and by web of science so if you start with scopus and web of science you should be sure that that particular uh, article i uh, would be authentic and good because publishers themselves also take lot of efforts because it is peer reviewed and only then published and if you go by citations it is definitely going to take time because whatever is published in 2020 will get citations only later and when you are doing your literature review there is one factor which you have to take care of that there is there are latest uh, journals you know there are latest articles it should not be that everything is very old they generally say it take within 5 years yes ma'am thank you so much okay once again thank you from bombay technologies and i would like to thank uh, all my participants and miss Mrs. Madhvi Vadkar for her valuable presentation, and uh, we are really happy to have you today, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Very much. Thank you. 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 Gracias.
Thank you. 